Hello, I'm Herb Buffington. I'm Peachtree Christian Church's organist. It's been my privilege to serve here for over 24 years, and one of the delights of my life is playing on the two marvelous instruments here in this church. I welcome you today to this concert. I'm so glad that you have decided to share this time with me. And I hope that this will bring you much enjoyment as we go through a concert of prayers and processionals. I've included a couple of fanfares in there too, but the title prayers and processionals just sounded a little bit too good for me to add fanfares in there too also. So please enjoy with me prayers and processionals at Peachtree Christian Church. For the last 22 years of his life, Arthur Bliss was Great Britain's master of the Queen's music. One of the important duties of that post is to compose fanfares for royal occasions. Bliss chose six of his fanfares to include in a suite entitled Royal Fanfares and Interludes, and three of those are included in today's performance. Originally written for brass ensemble and percussion, here they are arranged for organ solo by Basil Ramsey. The final selection of the three, a wedding fanfare, was composed for the late Princess Margaret's wedding in 1960.
Jesu Joy of Man's Desiring is the most common English title of a piece of music derived from a chorale setting of the cantata Herz und Mund und Tat und Leben, or Heart and Mouth and Deed and Life, composed by Johann Sebastian Bach in 1723. It is often performed at weddings here at Peachtree and is well used during festival seasons like Christmas and Easter. Flor Peters was one of the most renowned organists and composers for organ in the 20th century. He was director of the conservatory in Antwerp, Belgium, and organist at St. Rumbold's Cathedral from 1923 to his death on July 4, 1986, which coincidentally was on his 83rd birthday. His compositional style is fairly conservative, Rather than following the same path as his contemporaries, he chose to write new music using a familiar language and adopting classical forms, yet experimenting with polyrhythms and polytonality. Festival Voluntary was composed in 1957 and is a relatively short composition in simple form. I've actually played this for a postlude here at Peachtree Christian Church.
The story goes that after a long, grueling day of teaching, Edward Elgar returned home and sat at his piano and began improvising a melody. His wife, Alice, was struck by the tune, and as the evening continued, he began improvising variations to go along with the melody. In his exhaustion and playfulness with Alice, he began including characteristics of several of his friends and colleagues in the variations. The work that eventually became known as the Enigma Variations consisted of 14 variations, and Nimrod, which you will hear today, is number nine. Jaeger is the German for hunter, and Nimrod is one of the Old Testament's fiercest hunters. This variation is not so much about Jaeger as it is about a conversation these two friends had during a low point in Elgar's musical career. One day, Elgar was frustrated and considered giving up composing. Jaeger stepped in and compared Elgar's struggles to those of the German composer Beethoven. He asked Elgar how he thought Beethoven must have felt having to compose while going deaf. Jaeger then told Elgar that as Beethoven's hearing got worse, his music became more beautiful, and he encouraged Elgar to take that lesson to heart. Jaeger then sang the slow movement of Beethoven's pathetic sonata for his depressed friend. Elgar said that the opening of Nimrod suggests the pathetic sonata, just a hint and not a quotation. Nimrod is the most famous of the variations as is often programmed without the rest of the work. In the United States, it has often been used for 9-11 tributes.
The next piece on the program is Promenade from Mussorgsky's Pictures at an Exhibition. Pictures at an Exhibition was composed by Modest Mussorgsky as a memorial to his friend, the Russian artist Viktor Hartmann, who had died in 1873 at the early age of 39. Shortly after the artist's death, Mussorgsky visited a retrospective exhibit of Hartmann's artwork and decided to capture the experience in music. He completed the work in early summer 1874. The suite consists of musical depictions of 10 paintings by Hartmann interspersed with recurring promenade theme, which is the section I will play, and it represents a visitor, in this case, the composer himself strolling through the exhibition. The powerful nature of promenade, Mussorgsky acknowledged in one of his letters, reflects his own rather large physique. In 1971, the British pop music group Emerson, Lake & Palmer devoted an entire album to their own art rock interpretation of this piece. My arrangement of the piece uses many of the more majestic sounds of the organ and features solo reeds in both the Rifati and the Pilcher organs. improvisation that I'm including on today's program is an improvisation on the hymn tune St. Clement, the text of which is, The Day Thou Gavest, Lord, is Ended. And the text of the hymn is the work of John Ellerton, who lived from 1826 to 1893. He is said to have written it in 1870 as he made his nightly walk to teach at a mechanics institute. The tune St. Clement was commissioned by Sir Arthur Sullivan for a collection of new hymns, and it first appeared in his Church Hymns with Tunes in 1874. The tune usually is attributed to the Reverend Clement Schofield, but it's thought by many that Sullivan himself played a significant role in the composition of the tune because it was written so well. I've tried to capture the essence of the text in the improvisation, from the quiet, ethereal beginning, through an extended buildup and climax in the development section, and then returning to a quiet ending where the tune continues, albeit on a solo flute stop. I'd like to read for you the hymn's text and hope that you will think on these words as you listen to the music. The day thou gavest, Lord, is ended. The darkness falls at thy behest. To thee our morning hymns ascended, thy praise shall hallow now our rest. We thank thee that thy church unsleeping, while earth rolls onward into light, 
through all the world her watch is keeping and rests not now by day or night. As o'er each continent and island the dawn leads on another day, the voice of prayer is never silent, nor dies the strain of praise away. The sun that bids us rest is waking our brethren neath the western sky, and hour by hour fresh lips are making thy wondrous doings heard on high. So be it, Lord, thy throne shall never, like earth's proud empires, pass away but stand and rule and grow forever till all thy creatures own thy sway.
Up next is the Lord's Prayer by Albert Hay Malott. Malott was an American pianist, organist, composer, and educator, best known for his musical setting of the Lord's Prayer, which he composed in 1935. Written for solo voice, it has remained popular in churches, concerts, and recordings, and is a staple of many weddings conducted here at Peachtree Christian Church. The version presented today is one I have arranged for organ solo, which features many of the orchestral voices of the Pilcher organ in our Chancel Musicians Gallery. Crown Imperial is an orchestral march by the English composer William Walton. Walton derived the march's title from the line, In Beauty Bearing the Crown Imperial, from William Dunbar's poem, In Honor of the City of London. The march was first performed at the coronation of King George VI in 1937 and was substantially revised in 1953. Walton originally composed the march for performance at the coronation of King Edward VIII, scheduled for the 12th of May in 1937, but Edward abdicated in 1936. The coronation was held on the scheduled day, with Edward's brother being crowned instead. Crown Imperial was also performed at the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II in 1953 and was performed more recently as a recessional piece to the wedding of Prince William and Catherine Middleton on April 29, 2011.
Thanks again for joining me today. I hope that this has been fulfilling and that you have found satisfaction and comfort and joy in all of the varied pieces of music that I've performed today. I hope that we'll see each other again soon and please do join me from time to time as I present hymns of our faith on the organs of Peachtree Christian Church. <laughs>